two of my two-tone staircase makeover. If you're starting here, be sure to watch part one first to see how to apply the gel stain. And if you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. Part two needs a little bit of an explanation so that you don't get confused. I originally gel stained the banisters, applied three coats of polyurethane, and then painted the bottom white. The project was finished, but I was really unhappy with the end result. It looked okay, but every time I walked down the stairs and put my hand on the banister, I could feel drips and little bumps where there were bubbles in the polyurethane. When I tried to sand in between coats to take off those drips or bubbles, it would take off the stain underneath. So I couldn't sand in between coats, so I couldn't get rid of the drips, which was very frustrating. But after discovering 1500 grit sandpaper while I was working on another project, I realized that I could sand off the polyurethane and get a fresh start because the 1500 grit sandpaper did not take off the finish, but it did take off the drips and the bubbles perfectly. I originally used a natural bristle brush to apply the polyurethane, and I think that was where the problem went. The natural bristle brush held tons of polyurethane, so when I put it on, it just continued to drip and kind of make a mess. Of course, I want to show you how to apply the polyurethane the right way, so I took out the original footage of putting on the polyurethane and replaced it with the new footage of putting it on the better way. So here are the final brushes that I used for this project. For the gel stain and the polyurethane, I used a simple two inch foam brush. And for the white on the bottom of the staircase, I used a two inch purdy white bristle brush. I know this is kind of a long explanation, but I hope it will make things more clear. Now, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, I'm back today to start doing the polyurethane on my railings. I'm satisfied with the color I've gotten. I've let it dry over the weekend and checked around to make sure I haven't missed anything. I'm going to do my upstairs railing today and then I will show you how it works down here. But I'm going to test it first. I'm using Minwax polyurethane. This is better for areas that have high traffic. This is an oil-based polyurethane instead of the water-based polyurethane. You can use water-based but it doesn't dry quite as hard. So in a high traffic area, I wanted the harder material. This has to be done with the door open. If it is raining or really moist in the air, you don't want to do this. It won't dry as hard as it should. Also, if your material is white, don't use this. Stick with the water base because this will yellow your material, but with stain this dark, it shouldn't be a problem at all. All right, so we're ready to go. I've zoomed in really closely. I'm using the Minwax Fast Dry Polyurethane Clear Satin, and I'm just going to give it a slow stir, never shake it. I have wiped down the whole thing with a damp shop cloth. Actually, I did it twice, and now I'm ready to go. Instead of using this natural bristle brush, which no matter how many times I cleaned it with mineral spirits afterward, now that it's been a while since I used it, it's completely hard. This is just a cheap foam brush and it worked so much better. I can throw it away, get another one tomorrow if I'm doing another coat. No worries about washing it. I can also control a lot better how much polyurethane I'm getting in the brush, which really helps with drips. Once I'm sure I've covered all of it, then I'm gonna give it a nice Brush. Once the brush is a little more saturated, it goes a little better. Okay, now this is fast drying, so I really don't want to work that anymore. I also have the door open so that I don't pass out from the fumes. There are tiny little bubbles in the clear coat. And that's part of going slowly and doing a little bit at a time. You can make sure that you have brushed out every single bubble to give you the smoothest coat possible. This is what it looks like when a big bubble dries in the polyurethane. Even if you sand it off, it leaves a little ring with no stain in it. So I use that 1500 grit sandpaper to get it all the way off, sand it all the way off, and then you may have to add a little bit of stain to fix it. If you're lucky, you'll be able to sand it off without having to add stain. And if your first coat doesn't end up as smooth as you want, remember use that 1500 grit sandpaper and you'll get it right out. I'm gonna pause the camera for a while, do a little more and then I'll come back. 
So as you work, you'll find that you get a little more in your brush and you don't need to dip it anymore. I haven't dipped in my brush since I was down here. I'm now up here. I still have plenty in my brush. And the nice thing about going so slowly is that while I'm working on this little section, if I find that there was a bubble or something below that I missed, I can still take care of that because it's still wet because I'm doing such little sections at a time. I know it might seem excessively slow to you, but if you could see the difference between my first try and my second try, it is night and day. Okay, I just want to give you a look about how much I do at a time when I'm doing the banister so that I can keep a wet edge. I really only do about four inches with just a very little bit on the brush so that it's not soaking wet. Okay, then once I've done that, it's still wet enough that I can go back a little bit to the spot I was just in, make sure it's bubble-free and drip-free. And then I can move on again. Actually, let me show you. I'm really just putting a little bit. I just dip it in, wipe it off. If you can see my brush, there's not much in there. Checking the cracks, that's where it tends to build up. And then this groove along the sides is a great place for drips. And there you go. I'm finally ready to, stay, to paint the bottom, I'm really excited. I have already cleaned this with 50-50 denatured alcohol and water and now I'm just giving it a a sanding to rough it up so that I can do the paint on top. My husband and I have been painting the bottom today. We're using Bare Premium Plus Paint and Primer in One Swiss Coffee color, which is the same color as my baseboards, and I love it. My husband and I came up with this great idea. My husband went on one side, and I went on the other side. We each had our own brush, and we painted together up the whole staircase. But here's what we learned. I started with this short-handled brush. I was told that it's just as good as Purdy or Wooster. However, it is not. My side had deep brush strokes through the whole thing. My husband's side, he used the Purdy two inch white bristle brush. His brush strokes didn't show at all. So we learned, we both got one of these the next time and went both sides like this. The other thing we learned is we started at the top and moved down and we used a lot of paint. That created lots of drips that we didn't see because they started to drip after we'd already moved on from that area. So unfortunately, we had to sand it way down and start again. So here's what we did the second time after watching some tutorials. We both used the Purdy brush and we did not put on a ton of paint. We put on a light coats of paint and we started in one area, moved up just a little bit, did a final sweeping stroke through it all to even out the brush strokes and then watched it for a minute to make sure there were no drips. A lot of times you get a lot of paint build up on the backs of these spindles. So we checked for a minute, made sure we took care of that before we moved on to the next area. And if you do just a small area at a time, you won't have the area you did before that drying so that you can tell where you switched spots. So if you just do a small area, watch it, use just a little bit of paint at a time, light coats. You probably need three if you're doing light coats. And that's the way to make it work. Start at the bottom, move to the top. Use the Purdy brush. And it really didn't matter that this wasn't short handled. I found that I was able to get in between the spindles just fine. So that's the way we did it. Okay, last thing I wanna show you, and forgive me for peeking through the slats here, but I think that's the best angle we can get for you to see it. When, I'll put in some pictures here of what it looked like after I took off the tape. The paint went all under the tape got all over the spindles, got all over the lintel post, newel post. 
whatever that's called, but the paint got under the tape, which was really frustrating. I also learned that after every coat, take off the tape and retape it after it's dry. Otherwise, I'm going to have a big mess. But if you didn't do that and you got a big mess, here's what I did. I just took this tiny paintbrush that's just from my kids' paint sets. It's flat and these are dark. I used my gel stain and just very carefully painted over all the white and you can't even tell. So this was a lifesaver because it would have been really hard to get the white off of this without getting the white off of this at the same time I was trying to do that. So this was perfect. Don't worry. And now to answer the question I know you're all probably wondering about, why is Heidi's stain container completely covered in gel stain? Well, funny story that you need to know so that you won't make the same mistake. After I accidentally made a tiny drip on my stairs that will never come out with Java stain, I realized that I needed to be really careful and paint and put plastic down on the whole staircase when I did the stain. So I put plastic down, I taped it to the bottom so it was all perfectly covered, nothing was going to get through. And then, as I was painting, I would have the gel stain up here and then I'd be sitting on the plastic below that. Well, can you guess what happens when you move down to the next step and it pulls the plastic tight? Well, I didn't guess. <laughs> this, then, plastic pulls tight, this tips over and dumps all down to the plastic and onto your lap. Fortunately, the plastic caught all the stain. Unfortunately, my elbow also caught the stain, so when I leaned back, I got stain all over another tread of the carpet. So right now I've cut that out as well, which actually works temporarily, but thank goodness we're planning to replace the carpet on the stairs anyway. So don't do that. Now here it is, all finished and drip free.